Hello everybody and welcome back. Today I'm going to tell you guys about my Cape Cod trip and I'm going to show you some of the things that I bought there. I figured what I would do because I looked at some of the footage from the trip and I have a lot I suppose I could say. I was going to say I have some but I do have a lot but believe me you don't want to watch all of the footage I have. It's kind of boring especially the ride up there. And then once I got up there, I really failed at it, and I apologize. I really wanted to give you guys something to watch, and I just, I'm not good at taking video of things. But I'll, I'll show you what I do have, and hopefully you enjoy it. And I do want to show you some of the things I bought there, because some of these things, at least to me, are pretty cool. Some of it will appeal to the female audience a little more. And I did get a giant cross-stitch haul. So much cross-stitch stuff, and I'm actually going to do that in a different video separate from this because it's probably going to take me at least 15 minutes to show everything I got. So that's that. Okay, let me show you some of the things I got. I'm going to save like the best things for last, I think. Let me get this stuff over here. And I'll show you first the earrings that I got, and I'll tell you kind of a little story about where I got them and what we did in that place. So I got all these earrings in Provincetown. So Provincetown is all the way at the tip top of Cape Cod and it's a really fun place to go. For me, it was my favorite, favorite, favorite thing to do in Cape Cod. It's not your average town. If anything, you guys can look up about Provincetown and, and explore it a little bit yourselves. Um, it's got very, very, very nice people there and it was a lot of fun. But the best part for me was Miss Richfield 1981. If you guys ever watch Cake Boss, the show Cake Boss on TLC, you probably saw her. She wanted a cake for the holidays to jump out of for her audience. She's a drag queen and she is so damn funny. We actually got tickets for her show, I think it was three or four weeks before we went to Cape Cod. And I was a little hesitant to go at first. I'm like, I'm going to be so uncomfortable doing this. It's not that I'm not, believe me, I am left wing, okay? I'm not like, oh, I'm so afraid of these kinds of people. No, I'm like the farthest thing from that. It's just, I thought it would be like a very sexual orientated kind of show, very perverse, very uncomfortable for me because I'm kind of reserved like that. Believe me, I am. And... I thought it would be a little odd, but it was very, very funny, and she is very, very nice. We actually got to meet her before the show. She was out in front of the venue that they had it in, and she was meeting people and trying to get people to come in and buy tickets, and she was so, so nice. She's like, where are you from? Jersey, and she'd make fun of us because we're from Jersey a little bit, and we actually sat in a row in the venue where we, the, we were the only straight people there, and we were the only married couple there. And everybody else were gay men, which is fine, but she ended up calling us lesbians, which was really funny. Um, and then she said the only people from Jersey are lesbians and Jews. That's how she was. She was making fun of all the um, demographics, I suppose you could say. It was just a grand old time. And if she ever comes to your city or your town, you need to go see her because she is hilarious. You can buy everything in Provincetown. They have everything there. But I just... I don't know, I saw these earrings in shops and I'm like, I'm going to buy some earrings because I don't have enough earrings. I have so many earrings, I couldn't fit more earrings in my earring holder if I tried. These first pair, and you guys are going to be like, why did you buy so many owl earrings? And I did. Um, I actually was wearing a shirt that matched this pair perfectly the day I bought them. So I got these, these are really cute. I love his eyes. He's got crystal eyes. I paid like three dollars for those maybe eight dollars it's a big difference but it was like somewhere in there these ones are tiny and cute little owls and they have all crystal eyes and a little crystal body I'm sorry if my nails look like crap but I need to do them and I don't have time to do anything in the last couple weeks and you probably saw these um, owl earrings in my last video I'll show you a close-up. I think these are my favorites. They're cute. I love owls. What do you do? Another thing I got in Provincetown, actually in the same store that I got those three pair of earrings, is, and you're going to be shocked when I say this, a little owl. 
I'm actually going to put him right up here. He's going to sit up here next to, do you guys remember him? I still have him. I think we called him Blinky and Chester and, I don't know, Mr. Ghost Bones Man, you can call him. I got this duck there too. Don't laugh at me. I like random things. This little duck with the owl. This is actually for my dad. I gotta give this to him tonight when I see him. In another jewelry shop, I got another pair of earrings. But these ones were a little more expensive. They were $22. Not too expensive, but. And they're Wampum. Wampum earrings. And. Here, I'll just let you take a look. They're crabs. At the time, I really liked crabs. And I do like crabs, but at the time, I was like, oh, I gotta have these crabs. I love crabs, but I still like them. They're cute. They had, like, little intricate dangly earrings there, too. I kind of wish I got those ones instead now. But these are cute. I don't regret them. But what this is is Quahog Shell from Quahog Clams. And that has a huge history in Cape Cod. The Indians there used to trade it with people. And there's like a giant story in here. I'll hold it up and you guys can read it because I really don't want to read it. Can you see that? Okay. You can pause it too. Moving on, let me show you what I got in the antique stores. Um, the first thing I'm going to show you is a really old picture. I'm going to assume this is from around 1910, just from the way they're dressed. I don't have a date on it, um, so it's already fallen apart, you can see. But I'm going to try to keep it together. When I frame it, I'm going to just take the entire thing and put it in a frame. Um, the entire photo holder thing. I don't know what you call these. This is a picture of a new family. And I have no idea who they are. Obviously. But I absolutely fell in love with this picture at first sight when I first saw it. I said I had to have this picture. It was only $10. And it's obviously a very old picture. What I love about this picture, let me tell you. I love the expression on the father's face as he looks at the baby. And I love how the baby's smiling. If you look closely, you can actually see that the baby's kicking her feet, his her feet. I don't know if it's a boy or a girl. Because you can see how it's blurred. I love the way the mother's dressed. I especially love that little flower right there on her dress. I just really like this picture. Um, I actually bought it because I think in the future, when I have a baby, it would look really good in a nursery. I plan to do like kind of an old-fashioned nursery when I have babies and I think this would go good in there. Okay, the next thing I'm going to show you guys is like the prize of what I got in Cape Cod. I was so excited when I found these things. Um, you can actually find these in New Jersey here or there at antique shops. The only time I've ever seen these actually sold in New Jersey was in frames already and people were asking 50 the $20 to $50 a piece for them, and I was just like, I want them, but I don't want to pay that much for them. I found an entire book, like a scrapbook, full of these things, so I could pick and choose whichever one I wanted, and I was so excited. What these are, and I call these goatee girls, or goatee fashion plates, I heard them called goody or gaudy, it's G-O-D-E-Y. And these actually come from one of the first ever women's magazines ever published. And what a goatee magazine was, was it's like a fashion magazine, kind of like we have a Lauren Cosmo and Glamour today, where it would come out once a year and you would get your fashion trends from that. It was very useful to dressmakers and just the ladies would be able to look through it and because you couldn't just really go to a store and be like, I want that dress, I want that dress, I want that dress, you'd actually have to have someone make you dresses, custom fit you. And this is how they found fashion trends. I love the Victorian era and especially 1840 to 1870 is my favorite time for fashion and these are a gem for me. I'm going to actually have these framed, matted and framed, and just hang them somewhere, maybe in a woman cave or 
you know, just where they're mine. And I love these. And I actually am removing them from the plastic for the first time today to show you. These are actually lithographs. They're not printed pages because these are the real deal from the 1800s. This first one is from 1855. And these would actually be, I believe, walking out costumes, which is kind of like what you would wear just to go outside. Obviously she has a parasol and a jacket or a shawl or I guess that's a jacket. Very, very pretty. I want to show you in the order of my favorites. Mm, this one is from 1854, especially like the yellow dress. Very pretty. The whoever took these out of the book actually cut. They usually had a title each picture. They cut most of them, the title off of them. I think one of them has the title. It is what it is. It's a shame that they cut them at all. They should leave the books whole and sell the books. I would buy the books. You can get the books, but um, they're expensive, very expensive. Maybe one day I'll get one. I'd like to read through it and see like what was trendy, what they had in there. That'd be pretty cool. This next one looks like ball gowns and it's from 1854 again. This is my second favorite one. And I really like the white dress in this one. And this one actually does have a title. It's the whole page, it looks like, without being cut. It's called I Think I Will Do, and it's very pretty. It has a wedding dress in it, and just think about it. Back in the 18... this one's from 1855. Did I tell you guys what the last one was from? I don't know. This one's from... the last one was from 1855, too. If you were getting married in 1855, you would actually have to look at a book or a catalog like this and you'd have to pick your wedding dress from that, from a picture or lithograph and have someone make it for you. You didn't go to David's Bridal and try it on and try on 15 dresses and pick which one you like the best and have it fitted and like five fittings like you do nowadays. You would pick it out from a picture and have it made. And this one's my favorite. I really like the dress, the wedding dress. I like the veil too, but I don't so much like the cap. But there it is. Actually, let me tell you one story about the shop that I got the Goaty Girls in. I was actually proposed marriage to in that shop. It was so adorable. Much to my dismay, my husband's a big coin collector and they sold, sold coins in that shop where I got the go Goaty Girls, and we were there after they closed one day. They set up an appointment for him to come in and talk to the owner to negotiate some sales from some coins. And I was actually in there, and I was talking to the lady while we were waiting for her husband to come home to do the coin sales, and she had brooches and cameos from the 1800s in her... Um, case and I'm like I really want to buy a cameo one day and I'm, maybe I'll do it today and I was looking at them and I saw that she had morning brooches in there not like morning like good morning like morning like you just died and morning pins and I was just like I really want one of these let me look at them and it was funny because she put a whole bunch of morning brooches on the countertop and she walked away. So this little five-year-old little boy was in the shop and he didn't say much to me before then and as she walked away he actually came up to the other side of the counter he pulled a chair over, he got up on the chair, he took all of the morning brooches, threw them back into the case, jumped up onto the counter, jumped on me, so I had to grab him or he would have fell on the floor and he's like, carry me. So I'm like, oop. Okay, let me show you a picture of him. His name's Caden. So I'm carrying him through the store and he's petting me and you know whatever. He's like pretty and I'm like okay and he's like we put the clarinet together for me so they had a clarinet there and I'm like I don't know if your grandmother will let me do that and 
she's like, yeah, he plays with it. So I put the clarinet together for him. And I'm like, you know, I used to play clarinet, so I know how to do this really well. And he's like, play it. And I'm like, I can't. It's not, you know, my clarinet, and it doesn't have a reed. And he's like, here's the reed. He takes the reeds out of the box, and I'm like, I can't lick the reeds and put it on there. It's dirty. Someone wants to come in and buy it. He takes me all around the store, and he's like, there's spiders. And I'm like, yeah, I'm afraid of spiders. And he shows me, like, there's daddy long legs in the corners. And the lady sounds really embarrassed, but it was alright, because that happened. So finally he takes me over to, like, a display where they have cheaper rings that aren't, like, silver or gold, and they're just fashion rings, and he picks these two rings up, and then he takes me by the hand, and he walks five times around the entire store yelling, marry me. So I'm like, finally I'm like, yes, I'll marry you, okay. He puts the ring on my finger, and then he goes over to the tape, and he takes tape off, and he tapes it to my finger so I can't take it off. Here's a picture of it. And here's a picture of his ring. So I spent about two hours carrying this kid around and playing with him and he was just adorable but he was a ball of energy and when I left I gave him a hug and kiss and he cried and he cried and he cried and he cried but it was it was fun. It was a highlight of my trip too. He was a lot of fun. Maybe one day he'll see this video and he'll be like, there's my wife. I hope you enjoyed this video. It was um, a fun trip. I had a lot of fun. As far as going back, I'll probably go back one day, but I'll be honest with you, a lot of people in Cape Cod are not very nice. If you live there, I'm sorry, and if you watch my videos, you're, you know, you're nice because you're my friend, but some people there are very rude. And coming from New Jersey, that's saying a lot, because people down here are very rude, too. Um, but that's my impression of it. You know, they don't even hold the door for you. If they see you running to get in the same place they're going, they're just be like, slam the door in your face. It's like, wow. Thanks for watching. Bye. <laughs> Top of Cape Cod. Excuse me. Oh, that's okay. What am I trying to say here? Little, uh, daddy. <laughs> Ooh, what did I just say? But this is a picture of a. F <laughs> what was I gonna say? Oh my god. I can't say that word. Books, books, books. Okay. <laughs> Holy shit. I'm so, so. Everything's falling off. 